Good morning students. I hope you are all well and are taking proper precautions to protect yourself from the deadly coronavirus. Since traditional method of teaching learning is hard hit due to this epidemic, schools and teachers all over the world are trying to bring the mountain to the proverbial horse. That is, if a student can't come to school, then school will come to the student. These video classes are designed with a similar end in view. I hope they help you in your studies. For any questions, don't hesitate to leave a message. So today, we are going to learn about Three questions by Leo Tolstoy. Before we begin the chapter, let us have a brief biographical sketch of Leo Tolstoy. So Tolstoy was born on 9th September 1828 in Yasnaya Polyana, Russia. He died on 20th November 1910 at the ripe old age of 82 at Astapovo. Russia. His notable works include War and Peace and Anna Karenina, two major works in world literature and apart from these, The Death of Ivan Illich, The Raid, The Power of Darkness, etc. Before we dip right into the text, let us have a brief glance at the themes first. So this particular text talks about basic three ideas. Number one, live in the moment. Number two, listen to one's own conscience. And finally, do good to others. So as the title of the chapter says three questions, the first thing that comes to our mind that haunts us is this, what are these three questions. So, right, what are these? Number one, what is the right time to begin something? Next, which people should the king listen to? And finally, what is the most important thing for the king to do? Now that we have the three questions right in front of us, let us also at this very moment, look at their answers. The demystification of the three questions. So, the most important time is the present time. The most important person is the one with whom you are at a particular moment. And finally, the most important job is to do good to the person you are with at that particular moment. Now that we have understood the three questions and also their answers, before we move on to the characters, let us just stop a moment and think, why should we bother about this text? What will we take away why this text has been included in the syllabus? What is the use of it? You see, there is a saying live life king size. Basically, when you are a king, you hold power over everybody and everything in your realm. You have all the luxuries at your command. Your wish is the command. So when you are living such a grandiloquent life, why bother with these confusing philosophies of life? Why ruin your sleep over them just as this foolish king. For that, we have to begin at the beginning. A king ideally becomes a king because he has a kind heart and along with it, a just and responsible heart. With great power comes great responsibility and he relegates his duties responsibly. He has to be careful that the power that he holds never corrupts and is always driven by one motive in his life, a selfless, just service to all. So you see, 
we may not all born a king but if we follow certain ideals we can all live life king size so this chapter is a careful study to that end and now we come to the characters as i have been talking since the last few minutes you perhaps have already come to know that there is a character of a king so the first character yes is that of a king and the king has many courtiers around him he has many learned men wise people in his country but the next most important character in this list is that of a hermit and apart from the hermit the final important character is that of the bearded man now we have the characters in front of us now we know why should we read the text and we have also known uh, a brief idea we also had a brief idea about leo tolstoy now we should learn about the text we should go a little deep into the text any good text offers some conflict you see in literature conflict usually signifies a struggle between two opposing forces either on an internal level or on an external one a conflict can be within one's own self or it can be between two completely different elements so in this particular text we have both the conflicts internal and external the internal conflict is where the king is in a mental turmoil because of the three questions that haunt him he is in conflict with his own self as he continues his quest to become a good king for his subjects the external conflict comes when the bearded man who comes to kill the king and acts as a kind of antagonist that is a villain to the protagonist that is the hero king the way the king would deal with the man will resolve his inner conflicts too you all have the text with you so there is no need in going line by line what we will have here is a brief summary of the text the king is troubled with three deeply philosophical questions and nobody can give him any satisfactory answer so finally the king starts his own quest in search of answers he comes to a hermit in the hope of finding some solutions to the problems the king finally ends up spending a whole day with the hermit he digs the ground for the hermit and helps an injured man who takes refuge in the hermitage his actions bring forth the answers to his questions and thus fulfilling his quest now let's look at the king you see king generally refers to a person of supreme authority responsible for the well-being of his territory a responsible king therefore will always try to be his best self and a just ruler such thoughts are the driving force behind the three questions that sets the king on his quest despite seeking the answers from different quarters the king failed to get a satisfactory response this in turn set him on his quest which led straight to the hermit the hermit you see the hermit is really very important not only the hermit acts as a spiritual guru a guide to the king but the hermit also signifies the death of ego how let's come to that one of the important issues that the story addresses is this particular death of ego blinded by ego we never realize what we are doing the fact that the king was disturbed by those questions indicate an already enlightened state of mind when he went to the hermitage 
he cast away his regalia, that is, his royal dress, to take on the garb of a common man. This disguise is symbolic. He cast away the remaining vestiges of ego from his self. Once that ego is gone, the king and the pauper stands on the same ground. This is evident when the king starts digging the ground on behalf of the hermit. One thing that worries me, one thing that makes me wonder, one thing that is very difficult to understand is that why the hermit doesn't want to mingle with the royalty. Because, you see, some royal patronage will certainly uplift his humble conditions to a great extent. Actually, what we need to understand is that the hermit doesn't reject royalty. He rejects the outward so show of royalty. The regalia, the social marker that distinguishes one person from another, he rejects all that. The king had to lose all those markers and come down from his high state to be allowed audience with the hermit. This is one lesson that comes with power. While wielding power, one must remember to remain in partial and equal in judgment. To the hermit, the king and the bearded man, both are equal. And the real royalty of the king lies in his ability to forgive the man who came to kill him and thus convert his soul instead of punishing his body. The last important character we talked about is the bearded man, the antagonist. You see, every good story needs a villain. However, the bearded man in this story is not just a villain. He serves the purpose of highlighting the king's innate royalty. Swami Vivekananda said, Education is the manifestation of the perfection already in man. Following that rule, it can be argued that the answer was within the king himself all the time. The hermit had just shown him how to reach it. In this sense, if we consider the hermit as a teacher, then the bearded man is one teaching aid come assessment. While the hermit assessed the king's patience and humility, the bearded man involuntarily assessed how the king handles the temptation of power and made out justice. So basically we now know what happened. The king was worried. He had these three questions that was eating his mind. He wanted answers and because he couldn't find any, he came to the hermit. The hermit, instead of answering him directly, let him work on his behalf. When the king was working, a wounded man came to the hermit. This wounded man is the bearded man. The king took care of him and helped him heal. And voila, the king suddenly has not one but all three answers. How is this possible? Basically, Leo Tolstoy masterfully plays with the Eastern causality or cause-effect theory. Everything that happens, happens for a reason and every move we make influences the next piece on the board. The decision of the king to help the hermit had moved the remaining pieces in motion. His decision saved his life from the man and he in turn saved the soul of his assassin. As the hermit clearly states, it was his decision in the present time to help the man he was presently with resulted in the general welfare of everyone. The hermit had shown the way, but the journey was the king's alone and he returned prosperous than before. So now we come 
to the next part of our discussion and that is symbolism such a text offers several symbols working at multiple levels however the most significant of those include the disguise of the king the flower beds and the wound of the bearded man how let us take these up one by one first of all the disguise of the king you must remember that the king had to disguise himself before meeting the hermit it can signify a class strife where the hermit doesn't entertain people of the elite society on a metaphysical level it may suggest the disrobing of one's ego and pride and finding the way back to the roots of humanity to gain true wisdom one must first learn humility the disguise may symbolically represent the humbling of the king where he has to come down from his high stead and live and learn like any common modest man next is the flower beds the flower beds present us with a classic example of you get what you sow the added extension is you cannot sow anything without preparing the ground first the digging of the flower beds signifies the importance of acting in present rather than waiting and worrying over what may or may not happen in future and the fact that the hermit is seen sowing seeds in the beds next day also implies that the action today will prepare the foundation of tomorrow and finally we come to the bearded man's wound a complex symbol the bearded man's wound points out the importance of time life is not a bed of roses and wounds physical or emotional are part and parcel of it the act of dressing the wound at that very moment is crucial for not only it saved the life of the man but also saved the soul of the man and earned the king a loyal subject the wound is thus in continuation with the importance of selflessly doing good to the people we are with at any particular moment so this was the chapter three questions you see in order to do good we have to be good and we can only be good if we can understand what we are doing what we are thinking we need to be aware of ourselves first this awareness the king indicates by his questions because he was aware of his condition the questions came to him and because the questions came to him he went out on his quest to find the answers and when he returned he was prosperous than before and similarly we should all act in order to live life king size thank you